Hi everyone, welcome to Blue Lotus Gardens. How are y'all doing today? My name's Blue Phoenix. If you're new here, I make fun planting videos um, from my found uh, knowledge. Uh, and then I also share a plant vlog on Wednesdays. That's something that you're interested. Uh, subscribe and comment letting me know how you like the video. And I always uh, am looking to improve my videos. So I'll, I appreciate all little comments. In today's video, I will be talking to you all about why our leaves might turn yellow. Uh, and then I'm also going to be referencing uh, from a book that helped me along the way, um, especially like because I didn't know, uh, like starting off, I just really didn't know anybody until I started to like really like get to know people. And so I really appreciate everybody I found uh, along the way. So I also share like whatever they've helped me out with, with you all as well. But I'm going to share with you all today um, from uh, my this book that from the book that I recommend. Uh, the greenhouse expert this book has really like helped me out um, it goes really by it goes by month and so it tells you uh, like what you would do if for your greenhouse because I had a greenhouse in the uh, earlier and it kind of was damaged through the uh, current uh, weather conditions uh, in Dallas but so that's why I mainly had it for like that but it also talks to you about how to troubleshoot your plant so um, if you have any like general um, problems issues uh, past issues it talks about all that um, in a very simple way that helps uh, anybody else starting in the, in the in the plant world so it also in today's video I'm going to be talking to you all uh, re referencing a, uh, a Calathea this is uh, my Calathea uh, Rufibarba. This is my plants I use for examples. Uh, this is a Calathea Rufibarba. As you can see, there is uh, yellowing um, around the the leaf and brown tips. And so I'll be explaining to you all um, why this happens um, and also, also uh, helping you out uh, how you can uh, achieve a better Calathea. Um, and then I'll also be talking about uh, with about um, a monstera adesonia so um, about as you see, as you also see in this one it has uh, yellow yellowing leaf yellowing around the around the leaf and brown tips and most times when there's yellowing around the leaf it means um, that it's it's overwatered uh, and that there's usually a uh, a mineral buildup um, a virus if if, you, if you're thinking it's a virus, um, it would be more of like spotty yellowing all along, the le al along the leaves. And that, that would be more prominent and you would see it uh, more throughout the leaf. But this, this, this is, uh, I'll show y'all up close. Uh, but like, yeah, this, this is, uh, this, this, this would mean it's overwatered. Um, I, on purpose, um, overwater this plant so that way I could share this um, information with you all um, it is already set up like so that way uh, it's reviving that's why you see new growth from it which is kind of cool a little a little funny <laughs> the way it's shaped um, but yeah uh, this way if you see yellowing on the leaves it's it's uh, it's usually a sign of watering. It's usually a sign of overwatering. So, uh, tend to water less or amend your soil a little bit more than you did last time. Those are always uh, two big important parts in learning your pro like how to water better and also um, how to set up your your plants for uh, a better watering routine for yourself. I personally do not like to water. It's one of my plant chores that I. Uh, just don't really care for and so that was my big issue just uh, in the in the beginning with uh, with my plants so um, I did my research and this book really like helped me out because it really went in depth about it um, and so I really want to share this book with you all because it's it's something that really just was super helpful 
Um, like it goes about with like like upper leaves if they're firm and yellow. Um, if your plant is not growing, um, if your leaves are dull and lifeless. So these are all like things that I can um, explain to you all um, with examples and showing you all with uh, things that I have set aside so that way I could uh, share with you all. Uh, and help you all better understand things. My main main thing is like I would love for everybody to just uh, enjoy their plants as much as I enjoy my plants because now um, that watering routine is now like pretty low maintenance to where I feel very comfortable. I'm on a very busy schedule, so I need it to be like low maintenance watering routines. But I love begonias and calatheas, so. I gotta figure I figured it out for my own self uh, and it's mainly like the soil and the way you amend your soil as well so brown tips will usually occur because of um, droughts that are nearby and then also uh, people uh, continuously touching the, their tips uh, some plants do not like the, their, their foliage being touched um, I learned that with my begonia and phyoxis um, I was trying to set it up to a better method that I thought it was going to like it and it really didn't was not and it showed me that it didn't like it at all I lost like a three four leaves with that so there's new growth and so I'm not really stressed about it and it's fine um, oh, plants are like sh super strong and they'll they'll just they'll always live with a calathea um, overwatering mineral buildup and then droughts are going to be your your main uh, your main uh, issue. If whenever you have like a leaf like this, or uh, a leaf that's like this, uh, and then also this is also uh, be this this would also happen because um, what I'm doing right now to solve the issue of a, of an overwatering issue is to just let it sit and um, look after it um, I generally just wait till at this point I can probably I can cut this leaf off uh, or this one as well I usually wait till there's like no green left but there's new growth um, as you see here and this is a bunch of new growth as well so with calatheas they store water in their little tubers in their roots. If you watch my Calathea Rupavara propagation video, I share with you all on how they do that. So it, like I, I'll, I'll, I show you in the roots, like they have these little tubers and not to cut them off if you're propagating them because that will damage your Calathea and actually make it go into shock. So don't do that. Uh, but so if you're, you've overwatered your Calathea, you just want to let it mellow. You don't want to let it like you don't want to keep watering it you don't want to uh, transplant it you don't want to uh, take it out of its soil you just want to really like let it mellow and let it do its thing i learned from uh, a big stock a big inventory of calatheas that um, i had it damaged because of the winter storm in dallas that storm affected me a lot and i learned a lot from it so through that process, um, I guess that's positive positivity because I get to share that with you all. And um, I learned how, because I, I had uh, some Calathea orbifolias, I believe, or something like that. And they, uh, they, they were damaged by the really cold storm and uh, losing power. And the, so, sorry, I'm a little rambling and I'm all over the place, uh, but that's that's the that's the main per that's the main reason and um, what will happen so you just want to like let them mellow and let them uh, just keep on checking on them and you will only want to water them again uh, when it's like completely 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 dry and I'll show you uh, what so here's one of the the calatheas it's one of the ones that I sell on on my store uh, and it's dry just like really dry soil uh, and 
I, I, and as you can see, it's it's doing really well. There's just a little, little yellow tip there, but that was from its original leaf. Uh, also, you're gonna get some leaves, like their original leaves, that are gonna fall off, and they're yellow. Like their first leaves are gonna. Some plants just do that whenever they mature. Um, so don't worry if that happens to you. So if, if so if your plant has received overwatering, um, you want to just let it mellow, water it again, uh, and don't and don't water it this time with for, like don't water it with fertilizer. Just water it normally, uh, and then and then let that kind of like acclimate to like a for like a week. During this process, you're gonna see the the plant kind of taking energy. From where it needs to take energy and it'll show new growth so next we're going to talk about watering troubles so let's say you're um, having issues watering and the surface is not taking in the water then you would want to uh, prick the soil on top just a little bit and allow the water to uh, seep through those holes and uh, absorb be absorbed through the soil and you're gonna want to do this in, um, in like, um, you want to do this in uh, low amounts. So like, you don't want to just like turn on the faucet and let it all just water down. You want to just kind of like uh, let the water sit there for a little bit, and then um, that's gonna like let the soil absorb it and uh, and retain that moisture allowing the the soil to kind of break so that way you could pour more water through it um, from my from my found knowledge this is like what i've and uh, what i've learned um, so i'll be showing you all and then i've also i'm also like using uh my book as a guidance uh to tell y'all about what i'm what i'm talking about so that way you all know that um where all this knowledge has come from and um, just in case if I forget something off, like off the top of my head right now I can tell y'all let's say your water runs through and it's just it just runs through that means that the soil that you have is 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 done with all the nutrients that it's that it's retained in there um, and it's time for you to repot it and give it a new home um, it's usually time to up pot it as well I can share with y'all actually an, uh, an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have this adorable little uh, ladybug with this uh, cacti in here. And so this water, so I mean, so this soil that's in here, it's, it's already been, it's, it's uh, depleted most of its nutrients, uh, as you could tell because like the way the aloe vera is growing, kind of spindly and leggy, um, and not really retaining that kind of like dark green that it should have. So those nutrients are depleted there. If I share, if I, sh if I pop this out, it might be all really root bound. As you see there, all the roots are covered, um, covering the soil which means that it's ready to be up potted um, and that's and when I would water this uh, the water would just go straight through and it's basically doing nothing uh, but kind of like keeping it semi hydrated um, so it's definitely ready for a little up potting and um, I'll be doing that soon <laughs> these are like my um, living room plants so uh, they're kind of like a tad bit neglected <laughs> but I do take care of them very well um, after I make these little videos. So here's an example of whenever you leave a plant too long um, near a drought, you will cause these yellowing leaves. And then this is how it'll look. There'll be like some browning on the, on the leaves as well. Like that, like this. Um, you can cut these leaves, little leaves off um, if it bothers you for aesthetic. Um, for me, I it's it is what it is. It's nature. Nature doesn't look uh, perfect all the time, but it's super. It, uh, it but it'll 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 come back. And what I'm gonna do is just um, 
a pot it and then um, amend the soil allowing it to um, have a more uh, air more aeration in the soil also as well um, palms love to be um, palms love to be moist so whenever I amend it I'll I'll be amending it with uh, vermiculite and also uh, some of the willow um, the willow biochar that help, really helps a lot with uh, retaining moisture and water so that way it's like balanced and I don't have to water it so much uh, the last thing to talk about is um, how to identify if my plant has too little water um, ye the yellowing leaves are going to be are going to be a lot of signs for your watering issues or it's going to be a sign of a, of a uh, virus issue pests usually have brown uh, spottings and or also kind of like um, holes and deep weird markings on the on the leaves so that's a good kind of like general way of like going about it um, the book this book really helps me out a lot in identifying all those pests and um, issues so that helps me out a lot um, so if you have have you if so if you um, watered your plant just too little uh, what you're gonna have is uh, limp limp leaves and yellowing leaves as well and these are yellowing right over here they're well they're past yellowing but there's some yellowing leaves and these are like the the newer ones um this did not receive as much water as it needed to um and and so that's 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 the cause of uh this issue here and i just sometimes i really just don't really take off the dead foliage i just really wait till it looks like it's ready like to just actually come off or be chip, chipped off um but yeah that's uh and it's, that's that was an issue with this one that was too little like it, i just didn't water it enough and so it caused yellow leaves it started to limp um and there was um and the oldest leaves started to fall first I know this video is a little bit like all over the place um, it might be a little confusing um, and if it is always feel free to comment down below um, with any questions you might have I am always happy to answer them I'll get back to you as soon as soon as possible um, and overall I really thank you all for supporting my channel um, my plant shop um, me Overall, like, I, this is amazing. Uh, you all are awesome. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Have a good one.